Charlize Theron, she's a badass! Hey, what's up you guys? Film fan 0599 here again, and today we're going to review Atomic Blonde. So Atomic Blonde stars Charlize Theron and James McAvoy, and what this film is basically about. It's about, you know, Charlize Theron's character, she has to retrieve this list. This list is containing of a bunch of names that are very, very important, and let's just say there's a lot of people after this certain list. So, what did I think of Atomic Blonde? Now, Atomic Blonde was a movie I went into with some expectations. Because I was very excited for the movie. I thought the trailers looked great. I thought it could have been a fun action movie. You know, I love Charlize Theron. She's one of my favorite actresses. I think she also kicks loads of, you know, candy butt as an action star. And, you know, it was this was being uh, directed by um, one of the directors of John Wick. So, and he's going to be directing Deadpool 2. So, I was very interested to see what he would do, um, I guess, by himself on his own movie. So, and my basic thoughts on Atomic Blonde are... I will say this. The action sequences are fantastic. For the most part, really. For the most part, they're really great. Um, and stylistically, this movie is great. However, what really brings this movie down to me is its story and its characters. That's really what brings this down for me, honestly, is the story and its characters. Because they're not interesting, and the storytelling can be really sloppy in this film. And I was really disappointed with that, honestly, because, like... Just the storytelling is not that great in this movie. But before we get into my negatives, let's get into my positives. Because I do have some positives with the film. Um, first being the acting itself isn't too bad, honestly. It's, you know, it's not bad. I think the acting is pretty solid. Uh, Charlie Saren does a pretty solid job. You know, she's not bad as her role. I did enjoy her in the movie. Uh, James McAvoy was by far the best part of this entire movie, um, acting-wise. He was great. I loved him in this movie. He was by far the best character to me in this entire film. Really the only memorable character to me in this entire film. He was enjoyable to watch on screen. He was funny. I thought he was great. I loved him in this movie. Like, every time he appeared on screen, I just loved James McAvoy. Like, he was great. I thought he did a really good job in the film. Um, Sophia Bula wasn't too bad, uh, John Goodman for, you know, what he has to do, he's not too bad either. So yeah, the acting really isn't too bad in this film. The action sequences, for the most part, are really good. I think the action sequences are really solid. But the one that stands out out of all the action scenes involves the stairwell. This is the stairwell scene from Season 2 of Daredevil on crack cocaine. Okay, like, they upped the ante with it. You know what I mean? Like, they take that scene from Daredevil and just amp it up to a 100. And it's great. Like, it was by far the best scene in the entire film. I absolutely loved it. It was so great and so well shot in the film. Like, I honestly thought, you know, the action, um, that action sequence was so great. And there were some other ones that were really good, too. I thought some of the other action scenes were really solid as well. Um, the soundtrack with this film. The soundtrack is really, really good with this movie. I really... Love the soundtrack a lot with this film. You know, really uh, plays into the time because this takes place, I believe, in December of 1989. I could be wrong, but um, but I know for sure it takes place in 1989 when the Berlin Wall was coming down. So, just having like that 80s feel soundtrack to it was really great. And I thought it really uh, fit with the movie, honestly. And they did a really great job with that. Like, I really thought, um, you know, the soundtrack really did a very solid job in the film, like, I really loved the soundtrack a lot in this movie, it was really good, um, the writing isn't too bad with the film, I thought the dialogue was too bad with the characters, so, yeah, the writing wasn't all that bad, really, um, directing is great, I think the directing is absolutely great with this movie, um, you know, this is directed by, like I said, by the same guy, by one of the directors of John Wick, and the same person that he's gonna do, uh, Deadpool 2 as well, so, and he did a really good job directing this movie. It was very well filmed, very well shot, uh, editing was pretty solid, and the cinematography was really great as well. So, 
yeah, the directing wasn't too bad with the movie. I thought the directing was pretty solid with the film. Um, you know, and also, I could... Also, um, the movie does at some points move at a pretty nice pace. I will say the movie did have its interesting moments at times, but that's about it really. Like, the movie does have some interesting moments and has some good pacing, like, good, uh, pacing to it at times, but... Yeah, but I'll get more into that when I talk about the negatives, which are now. So, here are the neg negatives of the film to me. Um, first being the characters, like I said. The characters are forgettable. I'm sorry, these characters were really forgettable. Charlize Theron's character, honestly, was the most forgettable to me. And she's the main character of the film. Yikes, that's bad. And, yeah, I found her character to be very forgettable. Now, does she have, like, her, like, you know... You know, her badass moments and stuff, absolutely, like, your character has some really cool badass moments, I love it. But, her as a character in general, like, when she's just talking or just having a moment and stuff, it just, I didn't care. Like, I really didn't. Like, her character just wasn't that interesting, really. And, I just really didn't find her that interesting of a character, and whenever something happens to her, I don't honestly care because... Her character is just not that well developed to me. Like, I did not think her character was that good in the movie. Charlie Theron's performance is not bad in the film. I thought her performance was good. It's just her character is really, really forgettable. She's honestly the most forgettable character in the film. And she's the main character. Yeah, that's bad, like I said before. Yeah, I found her character just to be really unmemorable and really just forgettable. Same goes with, like, Sophia Bull, uh, Sophia, uh, Butel, Butella, um, you know, John Goodman, Toby Jones, like, just, they were all so forgettable, like, they really were, there's nothing that stands out to them. James McAvoy's character was the only one that was standing out, being, you know, being a standout in the movie, really feeling his presence. He was the only one in the movie that had any sort of presence in this film. Everyone else was just a bland robot in the film in terms of characters. Seriously, like, James McAvoy's character is the only character in this movie that really stands out. Everyone else is just forgettable as hell. Like, seriously, the characters are so forgettable. Not to mention that the story is not that interesting whatsoever. Like, the story is very, very uninteresting. And plus, it is so, so messy with its narrative. Like, it takes so many twists and turns that you're just like... Calm down, movie. Like, you're, like it takes so many twists and turns that you're just like, calm down. Like, seriously, like, my head was spinning at some point during this movie. Because I was just like, okay, calm it down a bit. You're actually, honestly, starting to confuse me a bit. Like, seriously. And just the way that they were just like... Um, turn back to this interrogation room because she's telling the story. You know, what's happening with, uh, in Berlin with the, uh, list and stuff. That's in the past. She's telling the story to John Goodman and Toby Jones. And just, whenever we would cut back to that, it was just boring. It just wasn't that interesting. Like, it's so sloppy, the storytelling with this movie. Like, it's my biggest problem with this film. It's the storytelling. It's honestly so sloppy. It really is. It's such a sloppy uh, way of uh, telling story in this movie. It's so sloppy. It really is. And it just doesn't make all that sense at all at some points during this film. It really doesn't. And some of the action scenes, I'm going to be honest, some of the action scenes, you know, um, like, they weren't, like, badly filmed or anything. I, I found some of them to be bland, honestly. Like, there were some action scenes in this movie that were just like, uh, all right, whatever. Like they were just so like, like lifeless. Some of the action scenes in this movie, like for the most part, the action scene sequences are really good. But there are some action sequences, the, 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 some action sequences in the film that are just kind of just meh. Like okay, like I'm like all right, that happened. Like it's just there was just some in this movie that were just like, eh, okay. Oh yeah, like I said, the editing sometimes can be. A little bit distracting. 
Even though the, the um most part for the most part the editing was pretty solid when it came to the action sequences, in terms of the storytelling, it's really sloppy. Like we'll cut to one part of the movie, then we'll cut back to another. Like like it's just it's the editing was sloppy when it came to that. With the action sequences, it was pretty good, but when it came to the storytelling part of it, it was really not that great. Like it really wasn't. I thought just. The editing at that point, at some points during that, was just really sloppy and not that great. Um, and the, honestly, the movie could be really, really, really boring. Honestly, the movie can just be so, so boring. And that's probably my biggest pro Oh, wait, I forgot to mention the villains. The villains are so bland. Like, the villains are just, like, so forgettable. It's just like, oh, we needed villains for the sake of villains for this movie. That's literally what they were there for. They were just like, oh, we need villains for this movie. Let's just put these guys in. It's like they give them no development whatsoever. It's just like, we need villains, so here's villains for this movie. Okay, and, and now back to what I was trying to say beforehand. This movie is really, really boring. My god almighty, does it move at a snail's pace, this film. For the most part, really. Like, for the most part, this movie moves at a snail's pace. And you're just not interested. At all. Because the characters are not interesting. The story is not interesting. It's so sloppy. So, obviously, the movie's gonna be really boring. Honestly. Like, it just moves at such a snail's pace, this film. Oh my lord. It's just, yeah. Overall, I was really disappointed with Atomic Blonde. It, it's such a forgettable and mediocre film. As I like to call it, Atomic Boredom. Or Atomic Bore. Like, that, that's basically what this is. Because it was just so boring to watch this movie. You know, besides some pretty solid performances, um, some really great action sequences, some great directing... I think really this movie is just kind of forgettable. It's honestly just a forgettable movie. Yeah, and I'm really disappointed by that because I really wanted to enjoy this film. So stop my official grade on Atomic Blonde on Atomic Blonde and my official grade on Atomic Blonde is a C plus. It's an okay film. I was really disappointed by it. It could have been so much better, in my opinion. It really could have, but it just, you know, with some really forgettable characters and some really sloppy ed uh, really sloppy storytelling and editing with that storytelling. Yeah, it's just a mediocre film because, like I said, what really saves up from being, like, completely awful is, you know, like I said, the solid performances, the really great action sequences, and, you know, um, the great directing with the film. I think that's really what saves it, honestly. And it's just, okay, it's fine. You're gonna forget about it, honestly. It's an okay action film. So yeah, it definitely deserves a C+. So what did you guys think of Atomic Blonde? Leave it in the comment section below. And I'm Film Fan 0599 and we will see you out later. Peace.